You know, every year they ask me to do this. <laughs> and every year I say, G -g -g come on, wouldn't you rather have a Swede? You know, I'm just a foreigner. You know, why, why ask me to do this? No, 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 we're, we want you to do it. And, and, you know, finally, Marcus Ingersoll took me aside and he said, nobody Swedish will do it. <laughs> it's not socially acceptable for us to look like idiots in public, okay? So it has to be you. So, Mr. Prefect, distinguished members of the jury, honored guests, overworked faculty and staff, terrified first years, exhausted second years, cynical but hopeful third years, and bewildered parents. Welcome to the 2016 Gotland Game Awards! Yeah! You know, I said bewildered parents. Um, and that's one of the cool things about teaching game design. Actually, none of the students are here because their parents made them come, right? <laughs> and, you know, you're here because you want to be. And that's actually, believe me, a real blessing as a professor. And I say that as the teacher of the research theory and methods class. Um, but in about five years, that might change. You know, we'll start having students whose parents grew up with video games. And then it'll be like, but Papa, I want to be an investment banker. <laughs> no. <laughs> no daughter of mine is going to wear stupid clothes and be a parasite on society and hang around the financial district with a bunch of lowlifes. <laughs> You're going to be a 3D engine coder like your mother before you. Now put on some black stockings and some sparkly shorts and a Metallica t-shirt and get over to Gotland. And I'd like to give a special welcome to our foreign visitors, um, to ancient Visby. This historic town was once the home of great riches. The treasures of the Hanseatic League poured through the very gates of the city through which you walked to get here. But that's all gone. There's power of another kind in Visby now. Several years ago, Stephen Batchelder, who was instrumental in building this program into what it is today, was telling people that he wanted to make this the best game design education in Sweden. And of course, this is Gotland. You know, what happened was everybody said, you can't say that. That's not Swedish. You're breaking the Antelogen. <laughs> you know. But what the hell, I'm an American. I don't care. So in recognition of Stephen's efforts, and in welcome to our foreign visitors, let's tell them all, welcome to the best game design education in Sweden. <laughs> tonight we celebrate the new wealth of Gotland. And tonight we utterly screw up our teleprompter. <laughs> The new wealth of Gotland, the wealth of imagination, of creativity, and talent of our students from a small department whose original purpose was to give young Gotlanders a reason not to leave the island. <laughs> we now import young people to Gotland from all over the world. They're all amazing, as you've had a chance to see, and they don't only make games for entertainment. You know, with games like Kai and Sam and Nicole, they also make games with a message something to challenge players' preconceptions and make them think. And we on the faculty are very proud of all of you. Tonight, we recognize the very best among you. And so, on with the show. Our first award for the best first year project is being given by Jerry Bellich. Keep that face down. Yep. Keep that face down. Fair enough. Hello, everyone. Uh, 
This has been a fantastic conference. Uh, as a lot of you know, I had the pleasure of being here two years ago, and all I've seen is an improvement in many ways, and it was wonderful two years ago, so that's great. Uh, I think we can all agree that uh, award ceremonies like this are a really great chance to celebrate the excellence of a lot of the work that's being done in a really long-winded way. <laughs> Which, which is fantastic. So we can just keep this rolling and I could just keep talking and talking and the suspense just building. But then of course there's that incredible euphoric feeling, you know, when you get that recognition and you get that award. For 15 minutes it's the best thing ever until it's immediately followed of course by the crushing realization that everything you have to do from now on has to be even better. So with that, <laughs> we have Squirrel Squabble, Zombie Crawler, wait, do I not read them? Okay. Uh, we got Trust is still up there, Cryptogram, oh, we could flip a coin at this point. Cryptogram! Where are you? prepared a speech or anything really <laughs> let me just say that I'm so so happy that so many liked our game it has been a very <laughs> for me as a producer it has been a very troubled time because <laughs> because as a producer I worry all the time that's my secret I'm always worried but it has also been quite amazing to see this project go from just an idea to seeing all of this come together where we create our graphics and our mechanics and then we have this goddamn bookshelf that we have to build. <laughs> and uh, we, we didn't know how to do it at first, really. It was very uh, abstract at first. But uh, as things went on, we got, these, we got an idea of how to do it, and uh, in the end, it worked out uh, really well, and I'm incredibly happy that it, uh, that it did. Of course, we had to make some cuts and stuff. The original idea was that there would be 50 puzzles, and uh, there would be um, uh, like uh, 10 different rooms, and you'd have to, <laughs> it wouldn't be enough for you to play through at least like three times. But as things went on, it didn't work out exactly as we wanted. But in the end, we're, we're here, right? <laughs> <laughs> My very first job in the game industry was with a guy who was seriously into nothing but money. He wanted to do everything in the least imaginative way possible, as long as it made money. And if I had said, I want to make a game in which a bookshelf is the input device, he would have fired me. <laughs> so <laughs> congratulations to that team. Um, for the best second year project, we introduce Gemma Thompson. Yeah, yeah. Ah, wow. If I were to try and distill my experience of Gotland Gaming Conference down to one emotion, 
I, I think it would actually be envy. And it's not a particularly positive or productive emotion to have, but it's a truthful one. Um, I've been privileged to see so many diversely creative projects here. Um, and I, I envy you, the students, this opportunity to be learning in what is frankly quite a realistic feeling environment. Um, as a, an independent designer as a, and a frequent game jammer myself, I've basically th thrust myself into this world where it's harsh and stress development cycles showing the game then to the, the public, to critics, and to your peers. Um, and on the face of it, this whole process is mad, but in the end, it's a really educational one. And this is what I've seen out on the show floor. Um, you, you've put these projects out, they've been tested. And, well, quite simply, I mean, the challenge is arguably even greater after those development skills you've been learning in the first year have really been put to the test, you're putting them out there, as Jerry said, you've got to follow, follow up performance. And so <laughs> I, I feel then that this award recognizes composure as well as uh, hard craft. Um, and so without much further ado, or frantically looking at my notes, uh, the nominees are. everyone um, we just really want to thank everyone that from the start just came and tested our game and give us input to improve it and everyone who tested it here at the conference and also gave us a bunch of feedback to improve the game and yeah we're not done yet so thank you <laughs> It's not only enough to create games, uh, you have to be able to explain them to other people. You have to be able to persuade somebody to give you the funding to make the game. <laughs> you have to persuade the rest of your team <laughs> that it's worthwhile. You have to learn how to pitch, and this is something that we're very anxious to make sure our students understand when they come here. So, here to give the award for best presentation is David Walensky. Uh, thank you guys so much for inviting me out, the uh, faculty, organizers, everyone, I really appreciate it. It's flattering to be here. Um, I suppose what he said is already the thing you guys know, which is that making your game, I don't really know what the math is like or how you convert that from American to your math here, uh, <laughs> but making the game is, let's say, 110% of what you need to do to get people to care about what you're doing. Um, beyond that, you need to talk about it, talk about it, talk about it. And uh, whether you win an award or not, tell people about the work you're doing, keep doing the work that you're doing. So without further ado, the nominees are...
I just want to say thank you so much. And like this started out as a really crazy idea, and yeah, we had to make a lot of like background work to make this even like possible. So I'm just glad that came through, and thank you so much. <laughs> We don't overemphasize the money <laughs> um, here in, in our department. We obviously are anxious for people to make games that will be popular, um, but we do ask, ask them to think about you know, other things as well, such as the games that have a message and so forth. However, naturally, we do want to recognize and reward those games that do have the greatest market potential. So here to give the award for, the, it's called the Cha-Ching Award. <laughs> is Per Strombeck. Thank you. Okay, okay. There was a joke at uh, GDC this year. What's the most frequent question a game developer gets? Do you know the answer? What's your monetization model? But it's not fair to say that uh, the business is added as an afterthought. In fact, if you think about it, the business and the money part of games were always part of the game design. In the early days of the coin-op arcades in the 70s and 80s, the game was designed so that you would play and then you would have to put in another quarter or krona to continue playing. So there's no, no reason to, to feel awkward about designing your game with money in mind, because after all, uh, without money, you're never going to make your second game. The nominees are... Thank you. <laughs> so, me personally, I'm very interested in like how you monetize, say, monetize games and like integrate that with the game design. But to be honest, we hadn't thought about that like at all during the development of this game. So, to get this award is really surprising and yeah, really awesome. So, thank you. <laughs> Every year we grant a special award, or rather not we, but the Almadalen Library. And because I'm never entirely clear what their criteria is, I'm going to let them explain it to you. <laughs> so here to prevent, present the Almadalen Award are Rosemary Larson and Linda Vagenius. <laughs> Hi. Um, so you want to know the criteria? Okay. <laughs> uh, this is the fourth time that we choose the winner of the library prize, and this year we were happy to see at least two or three games that show that you students are readers, that you like books. <laughs> uh, 
We are honored to have your games on display at the library. And you should know that a lot of people are playing almost every day. And the criterias are uh, a game that's fun to play. You should want to play it again and again. Every time you visit the library, you just have to play. And it has to be suitable for kids, because a lot of ki children are visiting the library. And the game is open, so everyone can play whenever they want. And, well, that's about it. And this year, it was uh, impossible to choose just one game. But we had to, and the nominees are... are free. <laughs> okay, this was very unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't really know what to say. I think, in my opinion, there are other games that would deserve this prize more than us. Naturally, in addition to being proud of all of you, we are also proud of our alumni who managed to go out into the world and do well in the game industry or wherever their career happens to take them. Today we have an award for the best alumnus and it's going to be presented by Jakob Berlund Rogert. Okay, um, I've been teaching here for almost 10 years to and from, and, and I'm increasing being, being, being made aware every year of, of how, how important and powerful an asset our, our alumni are uh, wherever you are around the world. Um, so the, uh, the price feels... Um, feels like a great encouragement to those of you who have gone on to become uh, great stars of, of game development. The Alumni of the Year Award goes to an individual who radiates confidence, who uh, left Sweden uh, to pursue their career, yet generously returned when asked to come over here and share her experience with us. Um, who was not content with one bachelor thesis and who works with robot dinosaurs for a living. Please welcome up Kim Ava. Unexpected. <laughs> I 
didn't even know that this award was going to be given. <laughs> and I'm almost shitting my pants here. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be seeing her again, by the way. <laughs> Our next award is the Innovation Award, and you'll have to forgive me if I have trouble with the Swedish names. <laughs> They're being presented by Lee Koberg and Daniel Polgar. So, uh, me and Lee believe that uh, the true drive behind the games industry comes from innovation. Whether this innovation springs from a new hardware platform, like uh, VR, for instance, or from exploring new novel game mechanics, this exploration and uh, curiosity is why many of us create games and why we love to discover and uh, play new games. And because of this, me and Lee feel extra happy to present the nominees in the best innovation category. And the nominees are... much to talk about except for what Daniel already said, uh, having a bookshelf, uh, that's nice. <laughs> For several years now, we've had um, a cl fairly close relationship with institutions in Japan. And tonight, we're uh, honored to welcome one of our uh, Japanese colleagues to come to give the Tokyo University of Technology MS Dean's Award. Please welcome to the stage Professor Kunio Kondo. Thank you. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Is this? Hey. hey, I come from Japan, OK? Do you know Japan very well? Yeah, yeah nice, good. So uh, uh, our university and uh, Uppsala University have uh, many, many good exchange programs. If you want to study the game design and uh, developing, uh, Please come our university, please. Okay. <laughs> so in this GGC, I play enjoyed uh, many many games very much. So uh, I cannot select a game best game. So I select uh, first uh, five uh, game, and uh, so. But uh, uh, I so I must select uh, 
only one best game. So, uh, so I have a student from uh, Sweden, Lisa. Uh, hi, please stand up. <laughs> so, I have a graduate student from uh, Sweden. Okay. She is a very, very good student. So tomorrow uh, at uh, Sigurat, uh, she presents uh, her research work. So if you have a time, please attend the Sigurat. Uh, Sigurat, please. And uh, so last uh, best secret keyword and and the nominee are <laughs> Why can't I hold all of these things? Um, making this game has been a lot of fun. Um, I'm, the, I'm the producer of the, of the game. Um, but um, the people who, the mind behind the whole game is Elis. It was his idea. It was a very good idea. And it's been a, it's been a joy ride. It's been fantastic. Um, thank you. So you've been hearing from the jury, and you have an idea of what they find interesting, but we also want to know what you find interesting. So you've all voted, I hope, in the Students' Choice Award, and tonight to give the Students' Choice Award is our own Alumni of the Year, Kim Abba. So I did prepare a speech, but I can't remember anything of it right now. <laughs> but I just want to say it's an honor to be back, and it's good to see how the event is growing every year, and that you still put out so many fantastic projects. And I just want to say that if you didn't win anything today, that you shouldn't be discouraged or feel bad, because when I was a student here, I never won any of the awards, and it worked out quite fine for me anyway. <laughs> so, the nominees are...
Uh, I'll try to keep this short, where I make a mockery out of myself. Um, uh, thanks a lot uh, to everyone who played our game, and uh, I want to thank everyone involved in arranging this as well, because uh, it's always great fun. It's on my second time, but I have two times, and it's been two great times. So, uh, yeah, thanks a lot, and thanks to everyone who voted for us, and uh, I'm glad you had a good time. As you all know, there's an issue with diversity in the game industry. And I'm very pleased to be able to say that a game about a black woman has won, even if she was made out of lava, <laughs> our final award. This is the big one, the Ownage Award. <laughs> and here to present the Ownage Award is the best speaker on the subject of sex in games that I've yet heard. <laughs> a very charming and delightful man, and one that I'm proud to call a friend, Richard LaMarchand. Blimey. The Ponage Award. Oh my God. Oh, you guys, you're so lovely. I have a load of notes right here about high minded things that I wanted to say to you all, but I'm going to put them to one side and I'm going to speak to you uh, just from the heart. Um, there's an aspect of game development that we don't often very dis uh, that we don't very often discuss at, at conferences and in our you know groups where we uh, discuss you know um, best practices in game development and I think it's uh, uh, and the subject that I have in mind is the way that developers do or don't respect one another and care for one another. Uh, in all of the best development situations I've had, uh, I think that the, the situations have mainly been good because we respect one another, we, we respect one another's opinions, even when they're different from our own, and we care about uh, everyone's good fortunes on the team, how we're doing, how our morale is, how our spirit is, whether we have everything that we need in order to be able to do our jobs well, and whether there's anything that we as individuals or as parts of the team can do to make those people's lives better. I want to tell you guys that the spirit I have seen here at Gotland Game, uh, a program that I heard quite a few years ago now, where there was something really special happening in game development, um, you guys have these attributes in a very, very strong way. Uh, and I think that it's giving you all of the wonderful things that all of us have seen in your games, all of us who've been playing all of your incredible, wonderful games over the last couple of days. Uh, I think it's where your professionalism springs from, the way that you work hard to prepare to do your very best job, to honor your teammates and yourself. I think it, um, uh, I think it gives you your experimentalism, that you want to reach for new things, to bring new people into this wonderful world of games, the incredible uh, range of different kinds of human experience you've represented in the games that you've made uh, in the past few weeks. So I just want to thank you for all the work that you're doing and thank you for having me on behalf of and, and everyone else here in this, for this incredible weekend. It's been amazing. And so... The nominees for the Ponage Award are
I just want to say that um, we tried from the very beginning to like make something that we can be proud of, and we work really hard every day. So even if it's just games, um, just keep up the hard work, and it will eventually pay off. Okay, I'm gonna say something as well. Uh, so, like, when going into this project, uh, the first thing that like comes to mind when you see the concept is like, oh, it's a survival game with RTS elements. How hard can it be to design? I mean, it's like StarCraft and Don't Starve and Minecraft mixed together. It's super easy. You have the just follow the schematic, and uh, yeah, that was not the case. So many times that we have like just taken our game and like pulled it together, um, I mean ripped it apart and like just, oh, what, what, what's the fun in this game? The game sucks, we need to like make it fun. I think we did that like three times, really some oh, crises. We had some three crises and yeah, I re uh, I'm just rambling right now, but <laughs> I'm glad that you liked our game. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, <laughs> thank you. Congratulations to the anchored team. And that is the end of our show. Um, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but I do want to hear one more round of applause for all of our winners and frankly for all of you who've worked so hard and spent so many long hours to get to this point. Congratulations. <laughs> Now there's only one thing left to say. Are you ready? Festan Kanburian!